Hi friends, uh, just trying to get back in the saddle. Um, for those of you that don't know, my mother died on Sunday, age 87, um, in her own home, in her own bed. Looked like um, a heart attack. She has had angina or heart issues. Um, she recently had a medication change. I don't know if that was anything to do with it. Um, and a blood transfusion. She mostly recovered from leukemia, which they thought would kill her like more than 15 years, 16 years ago. So um, I'm grateful she died in her own home with no COVID. Uh, the funeral was a bit of a nightmare. But again, I'm trying to focus on the positives. There was a funeral. Um, <laughs> I'll just, uh, I'll probably do a series called Memories of My Mother. Uh, not all rose-coloured glasses as well. It's um, been a very difficult, very difficult relationship. Uh, so, so yeah, but I've had, this is one of the reasons why I can't hate Facebook altogether, because I've had probably more than 500 genuine messages of condolence and sympathy uh, and I'm really grateful for that. You know, people I know, people who knew my mother, people who didn't know her, but who related. And even I kind of had a blurting fest between the death and the funeral. Another nice thing, I suppose, is that um, my mum died on Remembrance Sunday and her father had got shrapnel embedded in World War One, but the, the, the doctors said they didn't want to remove it. It was safer to leave it in situ. And he went on to live to his 60s. But then in his 60s, he had an endoscopy and it dislodged the shrapnel and it killed him. So ironically, he died within six months of retiring. And then she lost a brother in World War Two, And my grandpa, he said, after World War One, he said to his family, don't you ever celebrate war. I don't want you going to any requiems. I don't you ever want to hear my family glorifying war because there is no glory in war. But still, my mum died on Remembrance Sunday and was buried on Remembrance Day at 11 a.m. on the 11th of the 11th. You know how Freemasonic is that, but she would have liked that. So, um, yeah, it's been an emotional few days, but I just want to get back in the saddle and I wanted to address, there's been so many shocking things happen and it gives you perspective. You're not going out, Ruby, no. Just small blah, blah work stuff. I used to pay an online platform called CCN um, to broadcast. I used to pay them 100 a month, 200 a month extras for this, that, and the other. That, that, that's what they did. They were a, an international platform who charged their guest broadcasters to broadcast. Um, and I resigned from that organization. One of the main reasons was because they didn't believe the Holly Gregg case. Um, but anyway, it ended acrimoniously, but Biggie, allowed me a certain period of time to download all my videos, all the interviews I'd done on their platform um, before before he took them down. And, and so the, those were my archives. And then I put one up just recently because I was doing another interview with Colin Black, the artist of the paintings behind me, and he copyright struck it and got it taken down. And I just really want to know if there's any support out there for challenging that, to me, my voice is my voice. I don't care whose platform I'm on. You know, if Miles Johnson is filming me and interviewing me, if I'm paying Biggie and Mel to broadcast on their CCN, which they got sued for or threatened with a lawsuit because their logo and their title was so close to CNN deliberately that CNN threatened to sue them if they didn't um, change it. And um, they may even have sued them because they've changed their name. And that's another thing I want to say to YouTube. How can CCN do a copyright strike when they're no longer allowed to call themselves that? 
and and how can people copyright strike my voice and my interviewing and my broadcasting i think that's immoral i think when two people participate in a conversation they should have equal um copyright ownership of that conversation you know so that's that's to, I, I, I might get round to appeals I, i'll try it's the least of my worries right now um, but i just want to address briefly the um wilfred wong situation and i don't want to address it with any particular standpoint um i want to show you three possibilities and give you the information that I've received. And I've always said research is not my thing. I'm more of a speaker, um, but I'm very honored that people trust me and have done for years and years and years, particularly survivors, because I think they recognize the truth. You know, we recognize truth amongst each other. And um, so people tell me stuff. And, and I do have that photographic memory thing where I can remember this goes with that and this goes with that and this. But without the research backup that I've had for years now, I'd, I've never pretended to be that kind of a scholar, but I'm very honoured that people disclose to me. And sometimes I'm clumsy with that disclosure, but mostly I'm not. So the, the, the things I know so far is that... Um, and I'm not going to reveal my sources, and that's my privilege as a journalist. And I'm also in Ireland, and I also do not consent to secret family court laws. I think even, what's his name, Mumby, you know, has said that the secret family courts need reforming both in Ireland and other parts of Europe, maybe, I mean, England and, you know, because these laws that are brought in supposedly to, check, to, to protect the anonymity of children is often to protect the adults in uh, contentious situations, particularly with abuse. So what I know so far about the Wilfred Wong, Wilfred Wong, um, the ex-barrister and renowned activist for children's rights and against specialised and particularly uh, against satanic ritual abuse, which I'm surprised I haven't had more to do with him since I was covering the Hampstead case and I've always covered my own history of MK Ultra, but I've always been aware of him. It's closely allied with Belinda McKenzie and recently with John Wedger and uh, interviewed by Sean Atwood. I do like the connection with Talk New York. He featured in a three-day conference in New York on satanic ritual abuse. A commentary I did on Hampstead featured the first day and then Wilfred Wong and Gregory Reed, Dr. Gregory Reed featured the second day and they were both superb. And I think the third day was testimonies and um, questions and answers. And I've heard him say he's a Christian and I'm a Christian. Um, but I just have never had close dealings with him and I'm not sure why. So I'm not judging, but neither am I jumping to the bandwagon situation of, I'm not ready yet. And you can just say this is because of my, you know, I, I, I want to know, um, you know, before I tie my flag to a mast, I want to know all the facts and, um, so, so I'll tell you what I know so far, uh, all what's been told to me by reliable sources is that two of the women in the six people that were arrested for this scandalously reported alleged abduction of a child at knife point, that was just outrageous reporting by the mainstream media uh, and would possibly cause great alarm to parents of children all over the area's concerns. Oh my God, there's a mad people running around with knives that are abducting children. It was not that, that was not the case as far as I can tell. Um, so this, the party of six, three men, three women, one, one of whom was Wilfred Wong, an allegedly obsession of a 
a knife, but uh, I'm told it was just a little pocket knife thing, like a Boy Scout carries on his key ring. I don't know if that's for a fact. But I'm told that of the three women, two were blood relations of the child. Um, I would say, well, we like, no, I will. One was alleged to be his mother, and another was alleged to be his aunt. So this was not crazy people running around abducting children, like a horror story that would make children not sleep at night. I believe the courts were involved. I know definitely the police were involved. Um, I know that the mother's house had been raided and the child's um, art taken in the raid, which is very bizarre to me. Um, but some of that art was left behind and later forensically analysed uh, uh, with expert opinions that it did look very likely that this eight-year-old was being sexually abused. I don't know who the alleged perpetrators are. Um, I just know that it's not what the mainstream media presented. I know Wilfred Wong is very um, knowledgeable. And as I say, I, I'll put a link to the Talk New York uh, presentation he did, which was superb. But I will also say I've never had, in, in all my more than a decade of working in the similar field, I've never had any dealings with him. And I'm nervous about his associations with Belinda McKenzie, John Wedger, Sean Atwood. Um, just, you know, uh, and also, so, so that I do have Christian colleagues saying already, I stand with Wilfred Wong. And, I, and a part of me feels like, oh, I should be saying that straight away, but just, combination of being a survivor and having been on YouTube for more than a decade and been trolled nearly to death and um, being a journalist I, I, I have I'm, I'm going to show you three different narratives and let you especially the brilliant researchers amongst you draw your own conclusions um, so I'll share with you a statement by somebody that works in a team with him that does carry out surveillance operations of children believed to be abducted or believed to be in danger and not being protected by the police or social services as they should be. You know, and as a mother, if anybody kidnapped, well, I have had my children kidnapped in the past, but I was able to get them back within days. But if my child was abducted and I believed my child was being abused, I would face tigers and lions, you know, to rescue my child. So. I'm hoping that was the scenario. So I'm going to share with you three, three things. One is a statement by somebody in his working group, as we understand it, and others saying, I stand with Wilfred Wong, and clearly it's a foiled rescue, and you know the very most he could be charged with is a poor judgment call, or possibly being set up by those with whom he was working. Another camp, and I have to give credit, I haven't even caught up with the fight with Sharon Gale, but I think she and I both have on a level a certain respect for one another. We, you know, we can do the fighting another time, but the girl knows how to research and she knows from her own life experience um, how to question everything. So she started to dig and she's discovered things like that Wilfred has been a parliamentary researcher for quite a few years. And um, I talked before about the first Wednesday of every month where the likes of John Wedger, Bill Maloney, Belinda McKenzie, and Wilfred Wong, I believe, and others would gather outside Parliament the first Wednesday of each month. Um, I know that Belinda got a job working with a barrister's firm at one point recently. And I know that it's alleged that she was very senior in MI5. I don't know, you know, will we ever prove these things beyond a reasonable doubt? Um, but Wilfred Wong has long been associated with Belinda McKenzie and then publicly with John Wedger and Sean Atwood. Um, so, so I'll read you a statement from the, the sort of search and rescue team that he's been working with. I won't give the name of who wrote the words. I've just copied and pasted them. I've told you that um, 
the mother and the aunt were part of the rescue team and that the mother's house had been raided and um, the child's art confiscated by the raiding police, which to me is very bizarre. But remnants of the child's art left behind were analysed and a professional therapist gave an opinion that they would certainly indicate severe abuse going on. Um, and then the other amazing, so I'll, I'll share the link to Sharon Gale's research about the part she's, and she's digging further about parliamentary research and other different things, charities and uh, churches and so on. Um, and then I'll share Nathaniel Harris's insights, which are very disturbing, but very valuable nonetheless. Now, Nathaniel didn't know when he made his video, I'll put a link to his video as well, that the, the, the rescue party did include two relations of the child, two, two blood relatives of the child. And he didn't know the police had been involved and possibly, I don't know about the secret family courts, but it's possible. Um, but he made some incredible, um, he raised some incredible questions by, by highlighting again, the paedophile rings he's aware of through his own mother and stepfather and his own childhood, um, particularly in Wales and Milton Keynes, which is where Wilfred Wong and the other five adults and the child were found in a service station near Milton Keynes with false number plates. And he talks about Milton Keynes being another absolute hub for the paedophile ring with which he's familiar. So we've got three possibilities. We've got either Wilfred Wong is completely innocent and did a heroic thing and um, got waylaid and paid the highest price for it. That's one possibility and that we all need to rally and get behind him and prove that the mother's suspicions were right and the mother's a good mother and expose the paedophiles. That's one possibility. We've got another that there's parliamentary connections and um, uh, things that don't add up companies and methods of earning income and so on. No, you're not going out, no. You'd be a good girl, sit down. And the final possibility is that, and this is the one I don't want to believe to be true, but I do urge you to listen to Nathaniel Harris's video. He, he is an occultist, but not, it, it, there's this thing, and I would just say this, he says that Satanists don't believe in Satan, they just want an excuse to have orgies and be paedophiles and uh, degenerates and depraved. And uh, I do agree there's two kinds of Satanists. And I think Anton LaVey represented that, that level of alleged Satanism, paganism, occultism that Nathaniel's describing, where it's just a buzz and it's just a, lie down, Ruby, now, sit, sit. Where it's just an excuse to be debauched and depraved. Um, but there's also the level of satanic covens that I would suggest Aquino or Alistair Crowley were more um, part of, where you can, I'm very familiar with the spirit world, you can summon demons, you can, you can. Um, and so I would suggest there's that too. And I don't know what level of abuse this child was suffering. Um, if at all, although it looks to me that way. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just gonna share two links. I'll share Sharon Gale's research thus far. I've shared a little bit about what's been disclosed to me confidentially as a journalist. I don't have to disclose my sources. I'll share a statement from somebody from this search and rescue team. And then I'll share Nathaniel Harris's darkest option of is Wilfred Wong a double agent and you know, is it sometimes a case of both the father and the mother are abusers and they're just tussling over who's going to abuse the child? I don't know. So that's it, guys. Um, let's just go here, screen share. And I'll leave it. I just ask people to pray, pray for discernment. For those that do research, keep going. You're doing brilliant work. And let's just keep communicating. So this is the first thing which is the statement from somebody in that camp and this obviously this would be the nicest 
the nicest of the three options. So who is? Wilfred Wong is a campaigner and expert who has dedicated his service and career, heart and soul for 27 years to satanic ritual abuse, child protection. Specifically, Wilfred has chosen a field of child protection, satanic ritual abuse that defines him as an individual of the highest caliber. Get down from there, you're not allowed on that bed. Sorry about the dog. Highest caliber in terms of unshakable morality and astonishing courage. This SRA common law assembly, I'm not quoting the person that wrote this, but I do know who it is. This SRA Common Law Assembly is united in our unyielding support of Wilfred Wong. We have no doubt, individually and collectively, that Wilfred has become the latest target, target of satanic ritual abuse occult networks, coverings, that have infiltrated British law enforcement, especially the highest ranks and positions. Now, that is the truth. I don't know if Wilfred is, but that is the truth that there's infiltration across the board. From our research, we are clear that Wilfred was engaged in a rescue operation of the child in question from a satanic coven on the island of Anglesey, Wales, which does have history. This satanic ritual abuse common law assembly has received reliable, reliable information that the mother of the child in question was with Wilfred Wong's rescue team when he was arrested with the charge of kidnapping. They were all charged with that. And two out of the six have pled guilty. I do wonder if that's the mother and aunt for the sake of their child, I don't know, or out of fear, I don't know. And that she is in full support of Wilfred and his rescue team and their child protection objectives, hence her presence in accompaniment. Child's mother was also arrested with Wilfred for the kidnapping of her son. I don't know if it was a boy, I thought it was a little girl, but anyway. Her son was subsequently abducted from her care by corporate Crown Law Enforcement agents and returned to the satanic coven from whence Wilfred Wong and his team had rescued him. I'm quoting again, I'm quoting somebody. Wilfred Wong's satanic ritual abuse rescue team, all currently incarcerated by corporate crown law enforcement agents. Wilfred Wong, 55, of Camden, London, SRA uh, campaigner and expert of 27 years experience. And then I'm not going to read the other names right now. You can find them in the mainstream media articles. Uh, possession of a knife, even for the purpose of self-defense, is fully lawful under common law jurisdiction. This SRA common law assembly will be contesting the abduction and incarceration of Wilfred Wong and his team to the full extent of common law. God, I hope this isn't, I hope this isn't the same people that defended David Noakes and Linda who are both in prison, goodness me. Furthermore, we fully commit to continuing Wilfred's objectives to rescue the vulnerable eight-year-old child from continued satanic ritual abuse crimes, and we'll be initiating investigations aside from corporate Crown authorities in order to ascertain the details and profiles of the individuals responsible for a clear and obvious abuse of justice not least journalists attempting to obfuscate the essence of this high profile SRA child protection incident. I do agree the journalism in the mainstream uh, newspapers that reported on this situation have been outrageous and they're very clever because they put allegedly here and there, but it was scandalous journalism in my opinion. Right, so that makes me nervous because that same kind of brouhaha is my lovely mum was was said about Melanie Shaw and about David Noakes and Linda Tyre and all these people ended up in prison with acquaintance, Sabine McNeil. There was lots of huffing and puffing, but it didn't save them from prison. So I hope this isn't a setup. Now this is Sharon Gale's talk. And um, you know, there was a little girl who had a little girl right in the middle of her forehead. When she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was horrid. So this is excellent research by Sharon, and I'm sure she'll continue to do so. 
So I'll put a link to that. Let's just see if we can pick up any bits and pieces of what she's saying. On 1st of September, who knows how many YouTube interviews that he's done. Um, as you can hear, the baby next door is screaming as normal. So that's that seven. In So then he sort of like, we don't really know what he done from 2000. It's up again in SPUC Pro Life Limited. And this is um, 14th of December, 2013. And he resigns, the, and he's a director here again. Um, and he resigns this on 1st of September, 2017, okay? Then we've got the active role. Now, the active role is Centre for Bio Bioethical Reform for UK. Again, he's appointed here the 2nd of August. Um, so he had kind of like a year off, 2nd of August, 2018. Um, and he's still active there now. Uh, now, his occupation in SPUC Pro Life changed from being like parliamentary office researcher. Um, so his occupation changes in 2013 and he's now charity director. Yeah, so so just on on Wilfred's on Wilfred's uh, website, there's no donate buttons, but on these related charities, clearly there are. And I know Belinda McKenzie has had different charities, the Knight Foundation and Iran Aid, and different. And then we've got you know the whole thing with the John Wedger Foundation. Um, and I know that 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 there are a lot of people that want to help end you know protect children and end child abuse will make donations. It's a very lucrative field, sadly. And so I just hope that um, we can flush out whoever are charlatans in the field and just obviously support those who are not. Um, so I highly recommend the research Sharon's done thus far. I don't think she's drawing conclusions, although she might be more cynical than me. Um, I don't think there's anything strange as a Christian to be pro-life, that's just, to me, it's it's um, it's not rocket science, you know. Um, you know, to want to protect children, part of that being to be pro-life is normal to me. But the thing that pricks my eyes is parliamentary research. Are like, who's paying? Who's paying? If somebody's a parliamentary researcher, are they hired and employed by parliament? Is it, are these people establishment? I don't know. There's questions that are well worth asking. So I'll share the link to that. And then I'll share some of this one, which is excellent as well. Although without all the information, because Nathaniel was not aware that there were any family members in the um, rescue stroke kidnapping team. But his insights, the biggest thing he says is not only is Wales renowned for satanic ritual abuse, which was successfully prosecuted in part in the Kid Welly um, uh, case, but uh, he speaks from first-hand experience of the ring in Milton Keynes, which is where Wilfred and the other five were found with the child with false number plates. So I'll just play a bit of this. Oh, and I'll put it and in right. the pagan scene, uh, fled to Milton Keynes. Yeah, so I'll just say that. Hey, then taking the child to Milton Keynes, which um, I know from personal experience is also a bit of a hotbed. Two of those from the Colin Batley cult are uh, prominent in the pagan scene, uh, fled to Milton Keynes and now live there, being my parents, Anne and Adrian Bryn Evans. So what's going on there? Was it a rescue? Is Walford Wong a good guy? But his face blinds him to being as effective as he could be? Or is it like I suspect no, he's not a good guy. Not at all. And I'll leave you to watch that whole link. Um, 
uh, and Nathaniel is is an occultist, self-confessed chaos magician, but he gives a beautiful warning at the end of his video, telling people to stay away from the occult paganism movement in England. He describes it as he, he's he 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 doesn't think people he doesn't think Satanists believe in Satan, but I would suggest that there's a level that don't, but there's a level that do and invoke demonic entities. Um, but I love that he, uh, you know, as a survivor of that stuff, I love how he hands. So let's see if I can find that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So you need a freelancer. The obvious choice. Sorry. Is I'm sorry. I, jumped. I made a video. Uh, that's all I have to say. Right from that. So Wilfred Wong. So let's just see if he ends Was up. it a desperate rescue attempt? Because it seems like a bloody stupid way to be going about it. That's what, 20 years maybe? Right there? How's that going to help the cause then? How's that going to help those of us who actually are struggling to see justice, huh? All right, so I missed the bit where he says I'm find it. Any of these people. And uh, my advice remains don't get involved in occultism in the UK at this time. Don't join any groups. They all seem to be corrupt. All those with influence, authors, publishers, and bookshop owners, such as Christina, Christina Harrington, Fred Wells all acting wildly inappropriately and as far as i'm concerned really suspiciously and that's all i have to say very brave to say that very brave the other disturbing thing and the reason i recommend you watch that in full is he talks about somebody he considers to be a leader in pedophile rings who is a qualified highly qualified uh hypnotist and he said he uses his uh hypnosis training to mind control children so i'll leave it there guys pray for discernment pray for the truth to be revealed i really need as many of you do we really need to know if there's a wolves in, if there's foxes in the hen house um or if we need to get behind these people that that are brave enough to try and rescue a child because as i've said as a mother my children are grown now, but God forbid, if, if my children were in danger, I would face lions and tigers, let alone the corrupt British judiciary. Um, I'll leave it there for now with all the links in the description. And just pray, 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 and continue to communicate. I appreciate the people that have disclosed to me. I hope I haven't compromised anybody. And as I say, as a journalist, I do not have to disclose my sources. God bless. Thank you. And thank you to the almost 500 people that reached out over the loss of my mother. It's a lot to process. And links are in the description, Angela Power Disney.